Welcome. I'm Dr. Anthony Alessi. I'm a board-certified neurologist here at the University of Connecticut, where I specialize in treating athletes who have suffered neurologic injuries. Up to 3.8 million athletes will experience head trauma in the course of the next year. We typically associate these injuries with high-velocity collision sports, such as football, soccer, lacrosse, and hockey. By paying close attention over the course of the next 10 minutes, we hope to share with you information in this video that will help you avoid the serious aspects of head trauma in both you and your teammates. Throughout this video, we'll be referring to the three R's of recognition, rest, and recovery. Let's start by defining a concussion. A concussion is a syndrome or a group of symptoms of transient neurologic impairment that occurs as a result of a biomechanical force being applied to the brain. That force can either be a direct blow to the brain or it could be the result of repetitive motion back and forth where the brain is striking the skull. One analogy we're going to be talking about here in this video relates to a crack in the basement wall after a storm hits a home. That same thing happens at the cell level. There's a crack in the membrane wall where calcium rushes into a cell, much like water will rush into your basement after a crack. It's important to recognize the injury so that you can recognize the crack and proceed with repairing that crack. We do that by recognizing these early signs of concussion. Nausea and vomiting, loss of consciousness, drowsiness, confusion, mood changes, unsteady gait, and what we call the vacant stare. One analogy that we're going to be using throughout this video is that of a storm striking your home and causing a crack in the basement wall. Water rushes into your basement. Similarly, to what happens at the cell level where calcium rushes into the cell. Only by recognizing that crack and repairing it can you begin the recovery process. What happens at the cell level is when calcium rushes in, you need to pump that calcium out of the cell and that requires energy. So the most important thing you're going to do first is recognizing a concussion. It's quite difficult at times for the athlete to recognize it themselves. So we rely on observers, typically coaches, referees, and parents, should look for three signs. Those include an athlete who's on the ground for longer than they should be. That athlete may require help getting to the sideline and may be having a staggering or unsteady type of gait. These are all early signs of concussion, and the athlete needs to be removed from the contest. Not removing an athlete from the contest can result in additional injury. Similarly, another crack in the basement wall with more calcium rushing into the cell and causing cell death and severe brain injury. In addition to recognizing concussion, we have to deal with a period of rest. The reason for rest is because at the cell level, there are pumps that actually pump the calcium out of the cell, much like you'd pump water out of your basement. Running those pumps requires energy. So really what we're dealing with is an energy deficit. There's a requirement for more energy, so the body diverts energy from other parts and other organs to the brain. In doing so, if there's insufficient availability of energy, there's a loss of consciousness. The brain goes to sleep. That's why there's a rest period that's required. During this rest period, we may begin to see several symptoms. Those include headache, fatigue, amnesia, dizziness, visual changes, poor balance, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, changes in sleep, difficulty concentrating, and changes in appetite. As opposed to previous teaching, 
where we used to hold athletes out for extended periods of time with complete rest. We now try to limit that rest period to no more than two days. After that period, we begin symptom-tolerated active rest. Basically, we start to begin light activity as a transition to recovery. During the recovery phase, it's basically the cleanup. It's cleaning out your basement and starting to get things in working order. And that's what we're doing with this period. Basically, during recovery, we're talking about a process tailored to an individual where they will gradually increase their activity under the guidance of a professional in health who specifically works with athletes. This may be a physician or a certified athletic trainer. The typical steps involved in this gradual recovery include light aerobic activity, such as riding a stationary bike and walking. This is followed by more aggressive aerobic activity with getting the heart rate up. This would include running and doing wind sprints. Sports specific activities are next, such as drills. These could be skating drills or passing drills. The next step would be non-contact practice. An athlete involved in this will typically wear a different colored jersey to avoid being hit while practicing. The final phase is full contact practice. This will only be carried out after approval by a qualified medical professional. An athlete should experience steady improvement throughout this recovery process. Any return of symptoms during this process would dictate going back to a lower level in the process until symptoms clear. The recovery phase often takes days, weeks, or months. Sadly, some athletes never completely recover and have to retire from their sport. Throughout this video, we've referred to the three R's of recognition, rest, and recovery. Don't fall into the trap of ignoring these signs and symptoms for fear of losing your position on a team. Recognizing these signs and symptoms and getting medical care quickly will extend your athletic career.